Hello guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking about the genetic inheritance that modern Egyptians have from ancient Egyptians. Modern Egyptians are descendants of populations that lived in ancient Egypt. In this video we're going to look at ancestry that modern Egyptians inherit from their ancient Egyptian ancestors. So what I'm going to do is we're going to look at a series of DNA samples from the Middle Kingdom, the Late Period, and the Hellenistic periods. We're going to be looking at those DNA samples and then we're going to be estimating how much ancestry of each different period do modern day Egyptian groups have. Now the really neat thing about Egypt guys is that it's located in the crossroads in this like really strategic location where it's connected to Africa, the Mediterranean world, and the Middle Eastern, Western Asian world, and obviously North Africa. And so because of this, Egypt has always been an incredibly diverse place. The topic of who they were racially, culturally, and all that stuff has been like a debate, like even like this black Egyptian thing. There's been a debate since like the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries, you know? So these questions are not anything new, and people have always been asking them. Here you have the hmm? first king of the earth, the very first. And yes. the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, looked like this man. Uh, cet homme a des traits, uh, si vous voulez, plus, comme on nous disons, vous m'aviez dit tout à l'heure de ne pas employer un terme, mais sur le plan scientifique, uh, c'est un terme consacré. En tout cas, il a des traits de, de la race noire plus marqués que celle de presque tous ceux qui sont ici dans cette salle. You vous... can see that he has those traits that are associated with the black... Features. Those features associated with the black race, which are even more pronounced than many of the people here. It was this man who unified the Nile Valley from upper to lower Egypt, and this was 3,300 years before Jesus Christ. And to say the least, for the past few years or months, this debate has sparked the interest of a lot of people around the whole world, especially with the Cleopatra documentary, which caused a lot of outrage, you know, for, um, I guess, a decent reason, you know, for a decent reason, right? For reasonable, like, reasons everybody could think of, you know? Like, this has even attracted the attention of the Egyptian government a couple of times, and this topic has been debated for so long, and is still being debated, it's not going anywhere. So, I have to say, it's important that we approach the topic with a lot of caution, especially because we're dealing with people's identities and self-images here. So looking into the genetics of this, the DNA of the average Egyptian looks something like a mixture between Levantine Neolithic and Iranian Neolithic. This is pretty much the mixture for like most Egyptians and like Middle Eastern Arabs, you know, and like these proportions of like Levantine Neolithic and Iranian Neolithic ancestries kind of vary amongst different groups and nations of people in the Middle East. Now ancient DNA studies on ancient Egyptian mummies did find that a lot of Egyptian mummies did have genetic connections with the Levantine, Middle Eastern, West Asian area, and that they shared high affinities. And back in 2017, there's even a study that found or discovered or reported that Egyptians actually experienced an increase of sub-Saharan ancestry sometime maybe during like the Middle Ages or around the, um, slave, the Arabian slave trade, which was around like that same time period. But this study was kind of criticized by a couple of scholars such as S.O.I. Kida and Christopher Arad for like one of the reasons why is because it was described as an overgeneralization and described as making big claims with insufficient sample sizes. And so again, we run into the caution that we have to take and is that, you know, we have to figure out exactly what can we use as a reference to um, what, for what the ancient Egyptians would have looked like, right? Or genetically speaking, you know, what their ancestry would have looked like and if it changed much. The reason why these samples were described as like insufficient, right, is because these samples were mostly from like the third intermediate period all the way to like the Roman period. And a lot of them were Northern Egyptian periods or Northern Egyptian uh, um, samples. So like Lower Egypt. Basically, the idea was that, you know, they could have been more mixed and that like given this geographic area they could have been mixed with other people who came into the area and then on top of that too there's the time period right there's not it, like it doesn't show like an original egyptian would have looked like whatever that's supposed to mean it doesn't show us too much what an original the original ancient egyptian would have looked like genetically speaking if you know if you get what i'm trying to say now on Vahadur, which is jed mesh you know whatever there's an unpublished middle kingdom egyptian sample that is from upper egypt that can shed some light on 
ancient Egyptian DNA and how it relates to modern day Egyptians. This temple is from Upper Egypt, like I said, and it's from a place called the Tomb of Two Brothers and a place called Deir Rifa in Egypt. I don't know if I said that right. It's from the 12th dynasty, so it's a Middle Kingdom period sample, and it's from Upper Egypt. And so this DNA sample could shed a lot of light in, on like Egyptian ancestry. Right? And this was actually given to me by someone in my Discord server. And guys, the, the interesting thing about this sample is that it clustered with Egyptian samples modern Egyptian samples. It clustered with modern day Egyptian samples. So it tells us a lot. It tells us a lot about what ancient Egyptian ancestry would have looked like, especially during that period. And you know, the interesting thing is that it's even closer to the Egyptians than later period samples, like the Egyptian late period sample or the third intermediate period sample. This middle kingdom sample is actually closer to Egyptians than those samples are even. You know, and those samples are from later time periods in Egypt, you know, where the supposed mixes were supposed to happen. And so when I look at this, right, um, there was actually some, um, I, I went online and I found some websites that did some genetic breakdowns on the two. And I'll probably post them up on the screen as well as my own. And, you know, what we can see is that, you know, this, the breakdown of what this ancestry was, right, the genetic composition of this ancestry was around 53% Levant Natufian and then 22% Anatolian Neolithic farmer, then 10% Iranian Neolithic, 7.8% East African Alotic, Dinka related, and then 5% Caucasus hunter gatherers, and then 0.8 Ibero Mauritian. And so this was the genetic breakdown of this DNA sample. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that the Nilotic ancestry, or the East African related ancestry, is, is the only sub-Saharan component that you can find within this DNA sample. And this sub-Saharan component is kind of, I'd say, like it's East African related, right? And so you would have had some people who would have had, um, you know, more of this sub-Saharan component. Maybe the further back in time you go, or the further south you go, like if you went into Nubia. And you know, there was actually studies done on like Sudanese cops and even some Egyptian cops who have haplogroup B, and this haplogroup was said to be a result of colonization of southern Egypt by early Nilotic peoples, which pretty much coincides with the early, you know, migration patterns of what the early um, Nilo Saharan, East African Nilotic people would have looked like during that time period. And so if you want to know more about that, you know, you can check out my videos on that. I made a lot of videos talking about those migrations. And, you know, it's really interesting and worth mentioning because some early cultures, such as the Bedarian culture of Upper Egypt and I think also the Nakata culture, were described um, as having Horn African related skulls and or Horn African type of skulls. And so this is interesting because the Horn Africans are pretty much a mix of some ancient Nilotic, Nilo Saharan, East African component, and then this Eurasian component. And so, you know, it really, um, I guess it kind of shows that, you know, some of the ancestry is still there when you look at Egyptians today, or even this ancient Egyptian sample, where you see this East African component. Now, to determine and detect how much of this ancestry from the Middle Kingdom and from the, uh, and from the other Egyptian time um, periods, right? Such as uh, the late period, the Hellenistic period and whatever, to test how much related ancestry certain Egyptian populations in Egypt today have from these sources, is uh, I basically put them all into a calculator and I kind of calculated the different um, ancestries that Egyptians would have picked up from, you know, these sources and some extra Levantine, Sudanese, and West African sources and whatnot. Basically show you guys what those would look like. What I do want to say is that a lot of these Egyptian samples, a lot of the modern day Egyptians, a lot of their ancient Egyptian ancestry seems to be similar to that of the late period. And we see some people who even have like a balance of like both late period and this ancient Egyptian middle like upper egyptian dna sample that i just told you guys about and then some extra chases of like iranian and levantine ancestry and extra sudanese ancestry and then of course the west african ancestry now one thing i wanted to let you guys know about this setup that i made is that some of these ancestries such as levantine neolithic or iranian neolithic or whatever have already or might actually already be um components in these ancient Egyptian samples. And so the reason why I put them inside of the calculator is just to detect extra amounts of additional ancestry that they would have received outside of these sources. 
and so I'm going to show you guys these compositions or just genetic compositions right of uh, Egyptians today and how much DNA that they have from ancient Egyptian ancestors so we have one Egyptian sample that has 33.2 percent Egyptian late period and then 25 percent Levantine Neolithic and then 21 percent of that Middle Kingdom ancient Egyptian sample and then we have 11 percent Iran 4% Yoruba, 3.6% Sudanese, and 8% Iberian Mauritian, North African. And then another one has 30% of the late period and 20% of the uh, Middle Kingdom period, and then 13% intermediate, third intermediate period, 12% Levant, 9.6% Iran, and then 3% Sudanese, 2% Egyptian Hellenistic period, and then 2% Iberian Mauritian. Another sample, 30% of the Middle Kingdom sample. And then we have 25% late period, then 11% third intermediate period, 9% Levantine Neolithic, 6% Iran, 5% Hellenistic period, and then 3% Yoruba, 3% Iberian Mauritian, 2% Sudanese. Of another one, um, and this one is 36% Egyptian late period, then 16% Levantine Neolithic, 12% Yoruba, 12% Sudanese. 8% Iran Neolithic, 5% um, Egyptian Hellenistic period, then 4% Middle Kingdom, then 3.2% Iberian Mauritian. Then we have another Egyptian, this is Egyptian Cairo, this is 42% late period, 20% Levant Neolithic, 12% Iran, 10% Hellenistic, 6.6% Sudanese, 3% um, <clears throat> Yoruba, 3% Morocco. 1.6% Middle Kingdom. And then just the average Egyptian sample, 29% late period, 18% third intermediate, 13% Hellenistic, 12% Levant, 10% um, Iran, 5% Yoruba, 5% Sudanese, 4% Middle Kingdom Egyptian, 1% Morocco. And then for the last DNA sample, it's Egyptian Muslim. This one has 26% late period, 18% third intermediate, and then 13% Levantine Neolithic, 10% um, Iran Neolithic, 9% Egyptian Hellenistic, 7% uh, Egyptian Middle Kingdom, and then 5% Yoruba, 4.6% Sudanese, and then 2% Morocco. Right? And all of these distances are pretty much small or like fairly like little at all like 2% or 1% So it kind of shows that it's like a bit more on the accurate side now I also have another sample or like analysis that I did that my one of my friends showed me the one who showed me about this Middle Kingdom Egyptian sample where basically you can have the two samples and you can kind of determine what the difference between them are so I did the Middle Kingdom and then I also did took the Egyptian Muslim and basically I'll leave it on screen and basically what we can infer from this and what he told me is that it means that modern Egyptian Egyptians have more sub-Saharan related ancestry than this um ancient Egyptian sample which is pretty interesting because this ancient Egyptian sample actually has the most sub-Saharan um, DNA ancestry out of like I guess most of the ones that we have and then there's also increased Iranian Neolithic ancestry that um, modern Egyptians have you know that this ancient ancient Egyptian didn't have you know now what I want us to be able to take away from this video is that although admixtures did happen within Egypt no one is going to deny that uh, most Egyptians today derive like a majority of their ancestry ancestry from populations that lived in ancient Egypt now 100% there is definitely more data and DNA studies that we need to for more conclusive findings right or more conclusive you know like <laughs> um statements to be made about this right more dna will be needed because you know like egypt did have a lot of diversity through the different regions and time periods but i think the results should speak for themselves so what i want to do is to sort of give some perspective kind of add this out here into the space of you know this whole world of egyptians and ancient egyptians identity and all this stuff but i also want to say that i am open to like new findings new things can always be found you know and i think a lot of the things that i said should be kept in mind but also we should always like be open-minded and open to like different theories or you know even getting proven wrong proven right whatever just new thing anything can happen you know and so 
you know, we should always be accounted for. Now, if you want to learn more about the populations of ancient Egypt, ancient North Africa, the ancient Near East, ancient East Africa, be sure to check out my PDF document called A Report on the Ancient Population of North Africa and e North and East in Africa and the Middle East. The link to that will be in my description. Now, on this, in this PDF document, I write detailed reports about my findings of, you know, things that I've learned about certain populations like the Natu the creations of East African Cushitic populations and Horn populations and you know ancient North Africans like um and the Berbers their origins the Iberian Rusian what their DNA component will look like and I make regular updates to this to always keep up to date with the new things that I learned and new information that might be out there and so by reading this and by purchasing this is definitely a steal because I'm updating it constantly you know I'm actually going to release an update on it very soon and so I really recommend that you get it because yeah, because, you know, you'll be able to just get this access to this infinite, like, free knowledge that, like, you know, um, other people, like, it, it, would, it, would, it would take years for you to find, you know, because it took me years of researching this topic and debating with people just to figure out the things that I know in order to put into this um, paper. And so, you know, this would really help your understanding, you know, from a genetic perspective, from archaeological perspective, and all the above, you know, and I really get into a lot of detail in that. So if you want to check that out, the link will be in the bio. Now, with all of that said, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and, you know, to check out the next video, I might have somewhere up here, you know, maybe it's recommended right here.